Nothing new. Team that's trying to remain unbeaten is Texas, but tough road to hoe going on the road to Stillwater to face an Oklahoma State team that's lost only one game. And I think it's critical for Oklahoma State in this game to be balanced on offense. They have to be able to run the football. And that's easier said than done. Over the last five games, Texas giving up less than a yard per carry on the ground. Kennel Hunter is going to play for Oklahoma State, but only in a limited role. They have to find big plays on the ground. Right. Colt McCoy with a chance to make a big statement, perhaps, for the Heisman Trophy. Enjoy the game. We'll see you at halftime. John and Jesse, welcome back, everyone, to Stillwater, where the pregame atmosphere is electric, as you would expect, just moments away from a game of this significance. This has been the Nissan pregame shift. The kickoff is next. The Longhorns are in Stillwater, Oklahoma, first place in the Big 12 South on the line, and obviously BCS implications as well. If Texas wins out, it'll almost certainly play for a national championship, and Oklahoma State seems to be their toughest remaining hurdle. Florida already victorious today, and Alabama is idle, and a lot of folks in Iowa cheering for Oklahoma State to knock off Texas tonight. Let's welcome in down on the field, Holly Rowe. Thanks, John. As you mentioned, it was just a year ago that Texas lost to Texas Tech on this weekend, and Matt Brown said the problem was it threw them back into that BCS system. And even though they've beaten Oklahoma, they ended up not playing in the Big 12 championship game by the slightest of margins, point zero one two eight. Matt Brown had these T-shirts built this summer. These players won for them all summer long with that small margin on them to remind them just how close they were to championship caliber. Again, this week, all over the football facility, he put those signs up, reminding them they just have to be that much better. He also said he felt his team was tired last year. They cut back on a lot of the work they did physically and mentally this week. He wanted them fresh against Oklahoma State. And guys, you could have seen the pregame. Those guys were sky high. This is an energized Texas football team. They are determined not to let that history repeat itself. Mac Brown has never lost to Oklahoma State, 11-0, but there have been some wild games in the history of this rivalry. Oklahoma State has blown several big leads against the Longhorns in recent years. Texas won the toss and deferred, so Justin Tucker kicked off for the Longhorns, and Parrish Cox brought it back near the 20 for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. And here comes Oklahoma State on offense, led by the senior from Littleton, Colorado, Zach Robinson, having an excellent year, completing 65% of his passes. He's thrown for better than 1,500 yards, and he's the big 12 leader in passing efficiency, largely because of that ratio, 12 touchdown passes, and only three interceptions. 18 and nine in his career as a starting quarterback. They're a spread offensive team. They like to go at a quick tempo. It's Keith Tostin carrying. Texas believes the ball is out, and it is. And the officials will unpile the combatants. It's a Texas defense that has been brilliant on their way to a 7-0 start. And a big key has been the increase in the number of takeaways. They've already had more turnovers this year than they had all of last year. There's a ton of grubbing going on under that pile right there, Sean. And a lot of refereeing being done. The Cowboys are right. They did retain possession. Looks like Noah Franklin is the guy who came up with it. Let me tell you something. That may have been the best wrestling match of the night, but we're going to see. They had a lot of success last year with Kendall Hunter running the ball, and they came out with Keith Tostin. And Tostin, he gets hit by Easton Randall right there, number 91. The ball's out, but like we said, Noah Franklin, great wrestling match. Easton Randall knocked it out. Noah Franklin got it back. Oklahoma State has played turnover-free football in their last two games against Missouri and Baylor. It's Tostin again. And he's been seeing the bulk of the ball-carrying duty in the absence of Kendall Hunter. Tostin not as speedy as Kendall Hunter. He's been solid, as you can see, averaging 
Better than 100 yards per game in their last three games, all of them conference wins. But he's not the home run threat that Kendall Hunter is. You know, and, and if you're going to have any kind of a threat, this offensive line is going to have to open it up. The veteran offensive line, particularly at center with Andrew Lewis, making his 34th career start. And the tackles, Russell O'Connor on the left and Brady Bond on the right. Robinson, a threat to run. Did well to get across the line of scrimmage. And it will depend on the spot. It looks like they'll mark him short of the first down yardage. Near the 29, Roderick Muckleroy, the middle linebacker, the leading tackler in the season for Texas, made the stop just short of the first down yardage. Well, they look like they're going to go for it. They're going to go with a hurry up or at least try to draw him off sides right here. Oh, they no, are going to go for it. Mike Gundy, oh, in oh, arguably oh. the biggest game in stadium history, pulling out all the stops, going for it on fourth and inches from his own 29. Gundy in his fifth year as head coach. He's taken this program to several new heights. You mentioned the highest ranking ever in the preseason. They're going to go to a fourth straight bowl game for the first time in school history. But he's never defeated Texas or Oklahoma. That's going to be on the on the defense. That was like a Lamar Houston jump, and then he should have snapped the ball. Lewis should have snapped the ball, but instead he got a reaction from the offensive guard. And the officials led by Scott Campbell. Offside, number 33 defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Sean, you cannot undersell what just happened there. That early, in this part of the stadium, this field position, and Gundy saying, listen, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it. We're started right from the beginning. That, that's a major, major tough guy call right there. And going for it on the run on fourth and one against the number one rush defense in the country. Texas is giving up only 41 yards per game on the ground. Robinson again. He's a good runner, better than 1,600 yards in his career, and he powered that one out to the 38, where he's taken down by Emmanuel Acho and Roderick McElroy. When you look at this team right now, and you look at this Oklahoma State offense versus this Texas defense, Texas enjoys a speed differential. They can really run over there. And so one of the ways to neutralize that speed is to go right at them. Just be physical with them up front. On second and two, toasted again, and he's toasted at the line of scrimmage. Perhaps a half yard, and that's it. It was Keenan Robinson, outside linebacker, sophomore from Plano, Texas, outstanding athlete at 6'3", 232 pounds. You know, Sean, with this Oklahoma State offense, what they really would like to do against this Texas defense is keep it in third and manageable. Third and five or shorter than that. That's something that they believe they can use their short passing game, the quick passing game and rhythm, and still come convert the first. Well, it's third and one. We know they're in four down territory now, given the history already. They hand it off to Travis Miller. Into the bag of tricks early goes Mike Gundy, who does the lion's share of the play calling, and Blake Gideon knocked Miller out of bounds, but it goes to the 48-yard line of Texas in a first down. Nice job by the left side, Noah Franklin right there, and also Russell O'Kong does a good job. He's able to capture that left side, and he skirts for that first down. Gain of 14. That right there might have been the longest right there in between substitution I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Toaston ahead for nearly five. Keiston Randall made the tackle. And they like to alternate the tempo. Mike Gundy says they play in six different tempos. The idea to keep the defense on its heel, sometimes catch them off guard. And it's very difficult to substitute on defense against Gundy's offense. Not only the tempo, Sean, but the cadence as well. And so he'll go quick count, and he'll go long count. It'll be intermediate. He changes it up, and they do a very, very good job, and they keep you on your heels defensively. And they're coming out running, as you saw in the play selection numbers, right at this number one rush defense in the country. Robinson sidestepped the rush, then a pump fake to neutralize Sergio Kendall. And he's near another first down. 
Where is he spotting it? He's going to bring it back a distance. Crowd doesn't like the spot short of the 40 yard line. Well, he extended the ball, Sean. That's what you and I were looking at from the top side. You can see they're going to take where the ball is when he goes out of bounds. Yeah, certainly he stepped out of bounds right there, but it's where the ball was when he stepped out of bounds. And they marked it pretty, pretty close to the 40 once they moved it back to the hash mark. No argument here from Mike Gundy. And another third down. And third and short, exactly where they want to be on third downs. Texas has also been the best third down defense in the country this year. Well, here's another conversion against them. Justin Horton, the tight end. Down to the 32-yard line. Sean, one of the other things you can do to a defense that can really run is give misdirection. Anything in your offensive arsenal that makes a defender pause will slow them down. You can see here they start one way and come back underneath with the tight end, and it does its job. First down. That's the second catch of the year. For Justin Horton. The absence of Des Bryant. There's receivers and tight ends who are in the rotation caught a total of seven balls last year. Then very inexperienced receiving group. Toasting the ball carrier. He got inside the 30 to the 27 for a gain of nearly four more. Maybe the most impressive thing that's happened with this Oklahoma State team is that they became a team. I believe they really relied on Des Bryant to be the big playmaker, and now they're using everybody. Of course, the catalyst for all that is Zach Robinson. One of the 15 semifinals for the Davy O'Brien Award. He's the best quarterback in the country. That throw was too high for Justin Horton. Colt McCoy is also in the running for the O'Brien Award. And we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. And for those who want to watch baseball, what a great option it is to stick with the football for a while. Robin's down the seam, and it's broken up by Earl Thomas, the outstanding sophomore safety, one of the best defensive backs in the country. It helped from Aaron Williams. Thomas comes up limping. He's already had five interceptions this year. Yeah, a little hitching to get along, but this, this, this pass right here, that's not a well-thrown ball. That needs to be out in front of him more. He threw it a little bit behind, which allowed Thomas to come back and make this play. See how he comes back and undercuts him? Had he led him, you had six. Dan Bailey on to try a field goal of 45 yards. It is hooking, and it is no good. So a crushing end to an excellent drive for Oklahoma State as they kept the ball for six and a half minutes but come away with no points. Texas on offense for the first time when we come back to Stillwater. This is the 24th meeting in a rivalry that's been dominated by Texas. They're 21 and 2 against Oklahoma State and perfect under Mac Brown. The last Oklahoma State win was here in 1997. That was John Makovic's last year as coach of the Longhorns. They had a bad team. 4 and 7 were the Horns that year. But a lot of the games have been close in recent years. Oklahoma State has blown some huge leads in recent action against Texas. Here's Colt McCoy for the first snap of the game for Texas on offense. He comes out to his roommate Jordan Shipley. 191st career catch for the senior. Colt McCoy also a senior, four-year starter. There are some thought he's having a bad year. The percentage point of completion is about five percentage points lower than a year ago. But still, 72% is a number any quarterback would love to have. Colt McCoy in the right flat this time. James Kirkendall, good run after the catch. And a first down as he scurries out at the 42, chased out by Andre Sexton after a 14-yard game. One of the things that impresses you about Colt McCoy is that he sees the whole field, and then he's a good decision maker. Part of the reason he's throwing for 72% are because of throws like that. A lot of underneath stuff, but not at the expense of looking down the field. He'll take that look first, but he's comfortable checking it. For his career, he's completed 70.5% of his passes. That would be the NCAA record if he ends his career with that mark. That one's on target for Marquise Goodwin. 
But he is stuffed immediately by Patrick Levine and a loss of a yard on the play for Texas. You know, Sean, you talk about familiarity, and I've always said this, that familiarity in, in, in the high-level games like this does not breed contempt. It, it breeds confidence. You take a look at the offensive line of Texas. It's the exact same offensive line that played a year ago in this very same game. And only two of the front seven defenders for Oklahoma State. So there's a lot of familiarity. Ozzy Whitaker. Tackled by Jamie Blatnick. He's from Salina, Texas. 14 starters for Oklahoma State are from the state of Texas. A lot of them grew up wanting to play for the Longhorns. Many were not recruited by the University of Texas. Oh, and there's a major chip going around at Oklahoma State, too, for that. And they love playing right here for the Pokes. But like Bill Young, their defensive coordinator, says they'll be playing with their hair on fire. And the crowd's on fire as well on third down and seven. All day for McCoy, and he has his man Shipley first down to the Oklahoma State 42. Uh, one of the things you're going to see with Colt McCoy all night long is he loves him some George Shipley. Like you said, Sean, he is his roommate, but he trusts two things. He trusts that offensive line for the protection, and then he trusts that Shipley, especially against zones, will find the hole, and he finds him often. They'll move Shipley around in the slot and out wide. Natural position is in the slot. Oh, nice move. He was open, too, but McCoy went deeper down the field than an incomplete pass and a flag on Lucian Antoine as he leveled Dan Buckner. It was a little wobbly as he got back to his feet after the hit from the safety. Welcome to Halloween. That was, man, that was a nice hit. And Lucian Antoine, the last time we saw him, very physical player, just now getting healthy. Greg Burks, the referee, talking it over with this Big 12 officiating crew. That was an example. Push it foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 31 of the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. That drives me crazy. He did not launch himself. No. He waited for him. I mean, you can't... He, can't he hit him with his with shoulder. Helmet. Yeah, he turned his shoulder into him. That's a bad call. I know what it was. That was it's Halloween. It was it was disguised as something else. That's what it was. It was a bad call to start inside. Now an option look at McCoy with the play a mess. Did well to throw it away. Take a look at the impact players. George Shipley, we talked about. He's going to be the go-to guy all night long. Excellent feel for the game and the receiving. And take a good look at Bozzy Whitaker. He's the running back. If, if Texas is going to have any kind of balance, Whitaker's got to have himself a day. And then on the flip side, Sergio Kendall. He's the speed rusher. He'll have his hands full with Oakham, the left tackle, who's an outstanding All-American left tackle. Well, that could be All-American against All-American when Sergio Kendall is up against Russell Okun when Oklahoma State has the ball. McCoy on second and 10 to Shipley again. His third catch. This one good for another first down to the 15-yard line. Gain of 12. 193 catches now for Shipley in his career. Only Roy Williams and Quan Cosby have more for the horn. Now, if you're playing Texas, the one guy that you have got to be able to keep your eyes on is right there, George Shipley. They're going to get the ball to him. When I watched the Oklahoma game, Oklahoma versus Texas, they tried to take Shipley away, and they did a good job with it. He had a record-setting game last year in their win in Austin over Oklahoma State. When Shipley... Had 15 catches. Cody Johnson carries down near the 10-yard line. And Colt McCoy had a huge game last year against Oklahoma State as well. They're giving the Cowboys a taste of their own medicine with a quick snap right up at the line. And two more for Cody Johnson, the 240-pound bruiser at running back. They use four different running backs. And Mac Brown says they're all good enough to be the starting and featured back at Texas. Well, I mean, when you're recruiting at Texas, you just, you just go out and say, I'll have one of them, two of these, give me one of them. It's not like you have to go out and convince anybody. They're getting some of the best in the country all the time. Well, they admit, as a staff, they don't really recruit. They select. They have to evaluate well and then more or less choose who they want. Third down and three. McCoy takes off running and is tripped up at the line of scrimmage. 
Watson Miller got a hand on him behind the line of scrimmage and Colt lunged back to the eight yard line and Mac Brown will send the field goal team out. Well, this is life in big time football. Swanson Miller did a good job of disengaging, getting off that block, and then closing the lane because it was open. He just got the trip on him and sets up this fourth down. Hunter Lawrence, the senior, had an excellent season, as you can see. 14 out of 60. And this was a 25 yard attempt from a tough angle. Led no problem. Each team's had it once. Each drove the ball impressively. Oklahoma State missed a field goal. Texas booted one. Three nothing. Longhorn in the first quarter in Stillwater. And kickoff under clear skies. Texas leads three to nothing. And Justin Tucker will kick off for the Longhorns. The Big 12's all-time leader in kick return yardage has been bottled up twice now. Both returns have come out just short of the 20-yard line. Kenny Vaccaro made the tackle for Texas. 3-0 Texas back to Stillwater right after this. Last year, Kendall Hunter rushed for over 1,500 yards. He sprained his ankle in the second game of this season and has not played since. They were hoping he might go tonight. With more on that, here's Holly Rowe. That's right. He's only appeared in two games this year. He's got a right foot injury, and Coach Mike Gundy told us before the game it dep depended on how things went in warm-ups, whether or not he'd play. Guys, I watched him through the entire warm-up. He looked good. He was not wincing in pain. He had good cutting. He's standing on the sidelines right now with his helmet on. It looks like he is available to play tonight. Coaches have said they'll leave it up to Hunter. He has to decide if he's able to go. They don't want to do anything to mess up the possibility of a pro football future. Zach Robinson's pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage, and it falls incomplete. Sam Ocho batted it. Uh, you know one thing, Sean, I asked, uh, I was talking to Holly in the pregame about what she saw down there with Kendall Hunter, and, and as soon as, as, soon as he, she told me that he was dancing, I knew he's ready to go. And because when, it, when you start... You start feeling pretty good about yourself. You might bust a couple moves out there, and I know he's ready to play here tonight. Mike Gundy thought if he was able to play, because he's missed the last five games, he probably wouldn't be able to handle more than eight to ten carries. Robinson on the option look, pitched it back to Toaston, and he was stuffed after a gain of one. Nolan Brewster up from the secondary. But that gives Oklahoma State 41 yards rushing already. And that was the average number of yards per game Texas had allowed for the year coming in. And yeah, they got on a roll in that first series. And one of the things you're not going to be able to do, though, is just run east and west of this team. They're just going to run you down. And this is a situation that Oklahoma State did not want to be in, third and long. Third down, almost the full 10. Three minutes to go, first quarter, 3 nothing Texas. Second possession for Oklahoma State. They had the ball for 13 plays in their first drive. They'll go three and out here as that one was dropped by Damron Fuchs, a sophomore who has seen increased playing time because of the suspension for the year of the All-American, Des Bryant. Well, the drop is going to get them disappointed. What's not going to get them disappointed is Fuchs found the open hole, but he was... Quarterback was very well protected. Robinson had lots of time to be able to throw that football and look the field over. You can't waste that opportunity. Quinn Sharp, freshman punter, has done a terrific job in his first year. He took over for the Ray Guy Award winner of a year ago, Matt Bodge, and he's just about equal to his numbers. Greg hitting the ball's out. Flags are everywhere, perhaps for interference to make the catch. In which case, Texas will keep it regardless of who recovered the ball. I didn't see a fair catch signal by Jordan Shipley. Uh, maybe I missed it. But that was very well timed when the ball came down trying to catch it. He got there at, right at the same time did Victor Johnson. Jordan Shipley, incidentally, is an outstanding punt returner. Oh, one of the best in the country. Great. Mike Brown says these are the best special teams that he's had in his 12 years at Texas. Shipley's already returned two punts for a touchdown this year and they've had six special team scores 
crowd is looking at replays on the beautiful video screens here. They don't like the flags. There is no foul on the play for Bob. That's good officiating right there by the big, that big 12 officiating crew. And they talked it all through, and this is what they saw. There was no fair catch. Victor Johnson, nice clean hit right in the chest, and then a clean recovery. Shipley sees it and feels that. It's a field thing. And as the ball's coming down, Johnson just times it perfectly, puts his helmet right in his chest, ball comes clean, and then again, well officiated. And if you're wondering, that 24 was not Kettle Hunter running down on punt coverage. They have two number 24s. Deron Fontenot recovered the loose ball. Mike Gundy said, in order to win a game like this, when perhaps the other team has a bit more talent, you have to make some breaks. And he thought the kicking game was an area where they could. They get the first big play on special teams, and then keep Toaston carries for about two to the 32. One of the areas where they're not more talented is up front. So on this offensive line of Oklahoma State's done a good job. They've been coming off the ball, and that's rare for a team who's in the two-point stance all the time. Russell Okung, their left tackle, who's an All-American tackle, one of the things you want to see with him is just come off the ball and lower the boom on people. And when you're in that two-point all the time, it's difficult. Okung from a Houston area, another one of those Cowboys who's not recruited by the University of Texas. Robinson with plenty of time. Bodies sprawled on the turf at the 10-yard line and no flags. It was thrown in the direction of Justin Horton. They've got to feel good about the time to throw for Zach Robinson. That part they have straightened out. What they don't have straightened out is down the field. You're running your routes. And here's Hubert Anium, number 84. And that's, uh, that's one way to, to not run a route. He just got drilled by Keenan Robinson. Anium is the receiver who has really emerged, as Matt said at the top of the telecast, without Bryant. 19 catches in the last two weeks for Anium. He had six in their first five games combined. Another third down, third and eight. They snapped it with a second to go on the play clock. That's gone up for grabs, and it's incomplete. Intended for Tracy Moore, a true freshman. Earl Thomas, the sophomore, had coverage for UT. Tracy Moore is very well covered. Zach Robinson makes the throw, and it's he's got a chance to make that that catch. And I gotta say, you know, when when Des Bryant is that guy, you make that throw, and that's that's a first down. And that's that's the part of Des Bryant that's missing from this offense. Robinson just one out of seven passing. Oklahoma State's two out of six on third down. This is a fourth down. They're one for one. It's a blitz. He throws it up for grabs. Man open, and it's incomplete. He dropped it. Hubert Anium with coverage from Chucky Brown. And Robinson can't believe that that play resulted in an incomplete pass. Under duress, he threw a beautiful ball that Anium couldn't come up with. That, that is, that's, that's unbelievable. That's a great throw. That ball has got to be caught. Anium certainly has the capabilities of it. He just wasn't able to get the handle on it. But he beat Chucky Brown, like you said, down the left side. Gave himself enough room to be able to adjust to it. Just didn't come down with it. Those are, that's three great throws by Zach Robinson and they've come up with nothing. Yeah, prior to tonight, you couldn't say that they missed Des Bryant. But with a couple of plays not made by the receiving core. They would have liked to have him on the receiving end of those throws. Fozzie Whitaker dropped for a three-yard loss by Andre Sexton. Sean, this is in the pregame. This is Anium, and they're practicing Des Bryant stuff, just catching one-handed with his left hand. And it's just, you know, it's a drill that you do, but none of that stuff matters when the ball's in the middle of the game. And you have a chance for six points. You got to come down with it no matter what hand you use. Second down, 13. Approaching a minute left in the first quarter. Colt McCoy dumps it off for Jordan Shipley. And he's tackled immediately by Patrick Levine. We spoke with a number of the defenders for Oklahoma State yesterday with Bill Young, the coordinator, and they all said last year, Shipley had the 15 catches. A lot of them were just like that. They got right. killed by the short ball. Job one for them tonight. Take that short passing game away. Yeah, and, and have some discipline. 
and make him throw in front of you and then be able to come up and make the tackle. And right now, with the third and ten, they're going to play a zone. That's exactly what you have to do. Oklahoma State just 106 in the country in pass defense. McCoy tripped up just across the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Nigel Nicholas. The backup defensive tackle freshman who comes in in pass rush situation. And Sean, a nice dial-up by Bill Young, their defensive coordinator. You see three men rushing, which means there are eight people in coverage. Three deep and five underneath, and that's hard to throw against. It forces, forces that rush, and he pulls him down. A very entertaining first quarter. The only points, a field goal by Hunter Lawrence of Texas. First quarter about as even as it could be. Both teams at 51 yards of offense. Texas kicked the field goal. Oklahoma State missed one. Three nothing Longhorns. They'll punt on the first play of the second quarter. On fourth and nine. Justin Tucker's punt out of bounds. And they're still walking to market the long way up the sideline. <laughs> stopped in Tulsa. Actually stopped at the 33-yard line. Here's a look at our Pacific Life game summary. After the 33-yard punt, Oklahoma State had the ball for eight and a half minutes against the Texas defense that's number one in the country against the run and number two in total defense behind only Florida. Big drop pass of what would have been a touchdown. Newbert Anium couldn't come up with it. The big play in that first quarter on offense for Zach Robinson and Oklahoma State. Starting from their own 33. Bo Johnson, who's been the backup to Toaston in recent weeks, his first carry yields three. Here's Matt Weiner in New York. ABC or ESPN2 right now. All right, Matt, and while you were chatting, a quick tempo offensive snap by Oklahoma State. They threw a bubble screen to Hubert Anium, and his struggles continue as he fumbled after the catch, and it's covered by Blake Gideon of Texas. So Anium, who's been a star the last couple of weeks, has had a tough night through a quarter plus. And a nice job coming back by Ocho. Back underneath, and it's he does get the thing out before his knees down there. I think the elbow might have been down, and they are going to look at this in the replay booth. I think his left elbow might be down as the right arm is still yeah, grabbing like, the ball. Yeah, it's this a this a tough one because it looks like the ball may be coming out. Ooh. Yeah, it's see, it's loose right there. I don't know. That's that's for the officials to make their decision. This is one of those things if you're feeling good or not. <laughs> you go in there thinking, you know, I think this, it's going to be one of the, what's the call on the field? They're not going to be able to overrule that. What's the call? Well, after I watched the Iowa-Indiana game today, <laughs> I am hesitant to predict the result of any replay review. How about Iowa winning today despite six turnovers, four interceptions thrown by Ricky Indiana. Yeah, that looks like the ball is out. Ball is out right there. You can see Gideon sees it. He's just going to jump on it. Nice job by Ocho coming back in pursuit. Of course, the important aspect of this, the call on the field was a fumble, so it had to be conclusive that it was not a fumble, that he was down before the ball came out to overturn the call. Sean, you're right about Anium having a rough one here tonight, and he's been, he's been a guy they've been able to go to. After further review, ruling on the field stands. First down, Texas. That's the right call. So after playing turnover free football the last two games against Missouri and Baylor, going plus five in turnover margin in those two games, the first turnover of the night for Oklahoma State by the sophomore, another Texan from Garland, Texas, Hubert Anium. Put the headset on to hear the coach tell him, don't fumble. Yeah. Five wide receivers now for Texas. And a blitz from Oklahoma State, and they get to Colt McCoy. Jeremiah Price. Jeremiah Price.
Christ just comes off that right side untouched. Nobody blocks him. You'll see there's nobody, there's no one in the backfield. They went with five out, and they bring the double-A gap blitz, which forces you to come down inside. Tackle comes down inside. Guard goes inside. Jeremiah Price is clean, and it's a sack. It was the 14th sack of the year for Oklahoma State. They don't get many. Bill Young, the defensive coordinator, said when we get one, we are elated. Coming after McCoy again. Bill Young also said he's the best running quarterback they've played against, and he showed his running skill, his speed, as he ran out of bounds at the 46. Get it back to a more manageable third down. It'll be third down and 12 for the Longhorns, leading 3 to nothing early in the second quarter. They had to pull it down because there's good coverage down the field. But Colt McCoy, this is this is good veteran leadership right there. You look at Bill Young, their defensive coordinator, who's really done a masterful job this season. And they put him now in this third long situation. And he'll rush three and drop eight. Bill back at his alma mater. Colt McCoy's pass through two defenders and caught by Shipley. First down, Texas at the Oklahoma State 38. It looked like they had two defenders positioned to bat it away. But McCoy found Shipley for a 17-yard gain. That's a heck of a throw because that's five under, three deep. He's got to be in front of that corner and right atop of that safety, which he was. Watch Shipley. He knows where the hole in the zone is. He gets there, but that's all throw. On the ground, the ball's out again, but they're going to rule down by contact. Marquise Goodwin, who came to Texas on a track scholarship and then came onto the football team. He's shifted over now to a football scholarship. Sean, when Marquise Goodwin grows, he can fly. Now let's see if he's down. The ball's hit. He's not down. Elbow's down. Then it's out. That's another one of those. Let's see when the ball comes out. That's That could be a fumble right there. I think they were at least stop it to look at it. But the replay of Booth did not stop the action. And it's Cody Johnson carrying for a first down. Well, Goodwin, like you said, has the track scholarship. That guy can fly. You have to be able to have somebody who strikes fear in the secondary, and Goodwin does that. He's one of those guys that when he lines up, you better get deep because he can get on top of you fast. There's 13 career medals in the Texas high school state meets, seven of them gold medals. And you think of all the great track athletes in a big state like Texas. He's competed at the international level, won the long jump of the World Juniors in Poland in 2008. Bozzy Whitaker out of bounds inside the 20. They'll give him the 18, about four yards short of the first down. We talked about Fozzie Whitaker on the front end. They need balance in this offense. You just can't come out and just turn into a pure passing, uh, pure passing team. And Whitaker gives him that balance. He's, he's got some toughness. He runs well. He finishes his runs well. That's what you like about him. You just you'd like to see him get that, his hands on the ball a little bit more. They'd like to, he'd like to have his hands on the ball a little bit more. Fozwit Whitaker, nicknamed Fozzie. Good all-around back. Here's Colt McCoy running for the first down and then slides near the 12-yard line. First down, Texas on the move, leading three to nothing with 11 and a half to go till halftime. Now you know when Colt McCoy is in control, as that was a great read. And his eyes are not on the runner; his eyes are on that defensive end. And once he bites, he just pulls it out, and you just get the green that's there. Watch his eyes. See his eyes are up. He's looking at the defender, and as soon as he bites down on the runner, he just takes and gets what's there. The senior from Tuscola, Texas. On the design rollout, finally has a receiver for a first down and nearly a touchdown. It's Marquise Goodwin again. The McCoy family likes it. His dad, Brad, was his high school coach. Look at his eyes. He's just looking through the whole field. Looks to the outside, nothing's there. Works his way back inside, and Goodwin sits down in the hole. And Colt McCoy in complete control right here. The ball's going exactly where he wants it to go, and it's first and goal. Some of the numbers for Colt, not as good as they were a year ago when he was the runner-up for the Heisman. But he was sick for a couple of games against Texas Tech and Oklahoma. Ball's been bothered by an injured thumb. In short yardage, they go to Cody Johnson, and the Cowboys are ready for him. 
stopping him just inches shy of the goal line. They also have Lamar Houston, the defensive tackle in there, to lead the way. This is just power football. Ooh, boy, that looks like he got in. He may have gotten that arm. Looks where the ball is, has to cross the plane. And they're going to have to look at that one again. Under further review, rolling on the field with short. Now, if I'm an Oklahoma State fan, I'm asking, wait a minute. You stopped the game yeah, exactly. to review this, but you didn't stop the game to review what might have been the fumble on this drive. Yeah, bingo. After a quick review of it, the ball did break the plane. Had to get above the goal line. Doesn't have to get fully across, just to it. And it's a touchdown for Cody Johnson. Mac Brown said in other years when they've fallen behind Oklahoma State, he didn't do a good enough job of getting his team ready to play. And perhaps the Longhorns took Oklahoma State lightly. They know what they're up against here tonight. A talented team, 14th in the BCS standings. And they know how one play cost them a shot at just about all of their goals last 45. year. 10-45. As Max said, they couldn't even go to the Big 12 championship game because of that point zero one two eight might have cost Colt McCoy the Heisman in a close race cost them a chance to play for the national championship they don't want any slip ups They'll throw it back into the system and McCoy and his mates have come out focused and ready to go tonight and they lead ten to nothing after the extra point by Hunter Lawrence all season long we've been counting down and unfortunately for Bobby Bowden in Florida State, that wasn't the only wide right. FSU missed a game-tying field goal attempt on the final play against Miami the following season, known as wide right two. Be sure to tune in ABC's College Football next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time. We'll reveal moment number 15. Oklahoma State started this game with a wide left one. They had a chance, they drove the field and had the chance at the beginning to put three on the board and missed it. Colt McCoy and Texas now leading 10 to nothing. Line drive kickoff by Justin Tucker. And Bryant Ward alertly just pounced on it on the ricochet near the 28-yard line. Holly? Well, guys, I just heard Oklahoma State quarterback Zach Robinson tell his offensive line, boys, it's time to go. Also, I just saw running back Kendall Hunter on the sideline doing those high knee kick steps. I overheard him telling a, a teammate that he may be coming in here, guys. They're trying to get this uh, running game going here early. You know, Holly, he told that offensive line it's time to get going. They've been going. Zach and Zach Robinson's been going. They just they need to hold on to the football. A drop touchdown pass and a big fumble both by Hubert Anium. Big reason why Oklahoma State has not scored. Robinson. And that time Anium hangs on. Nice sliding catch for an 11-yard gain and a first down. And it'll come quickly up to the 38-yard line. Curtis Brown at the coverage for the Horns. And you got to like this, though. You know, the kid's been struggling, so what does Robinson do? He goes right back to him. Let him get the ball back in his hands. Keith Tolston. He's been the quote-unquote backup to Kendall Hunter for a couple of years, but... Tostin has rushed for over 2,000 yards in his career, both he and Hunter, 2,000 yards plus career rushers. First time in Oklahoma State history, they've had two 2,000-yard rushers on the same team. And they have a lot of confidence in Tostin. And he's more of a downhill guy, not the, not the home run guy, but he's dependable. Tostin, for his career, averaging 5.8 yards per rush. Under center, Robinson in the eye behind him, and it's incomplete. And almost picked off by Curtis Brown. Brown has a lot of talent. Coach is saying he's starting to play with more and more confidence now. If you're watching us on ABC right now and you're having difficulty finding the USC Oregon game, try ESPN2 on your standard definition channel. Both games are on. Some parts of the country were on ABC, other parts of the country were on ESPN2, and it's the reverse for the USC-Oregon game. 
Robinson on third and five. They convert. And another good catch by Annium with coverage from Shockey Brown. First down Oklahoma State at their own 49-yard line. It's a nice catch right there by Annium. And, and well thrown. But again, go back to what the offensive line is doing. Very well protected. Sean, they, Texas has not had pressure on Zach Robinson all night. Well, he's a veteran. Knows how to get rid of the ball quickly. And in this offense, they have a lot of quick throws. They've only allowed four sacks all season. That's the national low. Swing pass to Keith Coaston. That's another one of his skills. Mike Gundy told us yesterday, Coaston has an innate knack for understanding exactly where he needs to go in the passing game. Some guys just have a feel for it. You've seen the same thing with Jordan Shipley on the other side, but Coaston just has a feel. Now, you know, that one obviously just, he's just getting out in the flat and getting what he can, but he sits down and finds holes in zones very, very well. 20th catch of the year, so he's helped fill the void. The departure of Des Bryant. Poston carries about two yards short of the first down, wrapped up by Roderick Muckleroy. Of course, Des Bryant's case was considered by the NCAA. They wound up suspending him for a calendar year until September of next year for lying to the NCAA. He admitted that he was less than truthful when they first began questioning him about interaction with Deion Sanders. That is under appeal, but Mike Gundy says he does not hold out much hope that they'll win the appeal and that Bryant will return this year. And he's likely to go into the NFL draft and not return at all to Oklahoma State. Travis Miller carried successfully in the first quarter. Not that time. Emmanuel Acho said, you're not going to do that again. That was really well done by Acho because that's just pure speed on speed. Looks like they're going to try. Go for it here on fourth down. They're going to hurry up. But see Acho come from inside out. They caught the horns with men running on and off the field. And another fourth down conversion. Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator, said you have to be so careful when you go to substitute on defense, particularly when the ball's on the hash mark furthest from your sideline, which it is right now. They try to run men off and on. Oklahoma State takes advantage of that whenever they can. And they convert for the first down. Well, Justin Blackman made the catch. Yeah, and that, that's really well done by Zach Robinson. He finds Blackman right away, and that pace that we talked about is working for them. Option pitch. Toaston breaks a tackle. Tough run. Down to the 31. He got seven before Lamar Houston. The former 260-pound high school tailback took him down. That's why he wears that number 33. He was a running back when he first got to Texas. Now a defensive tackle. Stops a linebacker and defensive end along the way. Yeah, he's going down the evolutionary scale in the football room. He, start, he started a runner, and he went to backer. Now he's down to the Texas. defensive Texas lineman. Next stop, offensive line. <laughs> he's up to 300 pounds, and he wears it well. Tie him out midway through the second quarter. Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Holly Rowe, and Stillwater, Oklahoma. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines. Texas leads 10 to nothing. Kendall Hunter is on the field for Oklahoma State at running back for the first time since the second game of the season when they were upset by the University of Houston. Second down and three. The give is to Hunter, and he is stopped immediately. Kendall ran for 161 yards last year against Texas. But last year, the running game had the benefit, Matt, of Des Bryant. Will Muschamp said they rolled a lot of defenders to Bryant, let them have a little more in the running game a year ago than they expect to let them have tonight. Yeah, that's when you start using kind of like what, they, what people do with Randy Moss. They start rolling things to him, and it opens things for everybody else. And the benefit of that was Kendall Hunter, but now he's off for this play. Third down and two. Third and short is where they wanted to be. Robinson had to deliver, and it's intercepted by Curtis Brown. He has a lot of blockers coming with him. One man to beat, and he beats them. Robinson was there, but he was blocked by Sergio Kendall with great hustle. Touchdown for Curtis Brown, the eighth non-offensive touchdown of the season to lead the nation for the University of Texas. Great and 
anticipation and a great jump on the ball. He reads as well. Watch him down below. Watch him break right there. Very, very well done. Fuchs did not come back to the ball. Curtis Brown did. And then he just took it all away. Like you said, nice job by Kendall with the hustle. And the extra point up and good by Hunter Lawrence. First interception of the year for Curtis Brown, the 13th for the University of Texas this season. All of them by defensive backs. And it's the second interception return for a score by the Horns this year. They're up 17 and nothing. Zach Robinson interception returned 77 yards for a score by Curtis Brown. The eighth non-offensive touchdown of the season for Texas. That leads the country. Two kickoff returns, two punt returns, two interception returns now, and two block punts for scores. And over the last decade, Texas has been one of the best in the country at that. That's their 71st non-offensive touchdown since 1999. Only Virginia Tech and Kansas State with more. Frustration for Oklahoma State on its home field. They've moved the ball, but they've hurt themselves. Justin Tucker with his kickoff return by Victor Johnson. And those outstanding special teams to the forefront again for Texas, stopping Johnson at the 15. Let's check in with Matt Weiner in New York. <laughs> And the folks in Tennessee love it. And they can beat the head ball coach, formerly known as the old ball coach. Justin Blackman, the catch on first down for Oklahoma State. And he's out of bounds just a little bit short of the first down. And here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Curtis Brown just had that nice run back for a touchdown for Texas. When he came over to the sidelines, he was too busy drinking Gatorade to get much celebratory congratulations. All right, Holly, back to you in a second. First, Justin Blackman with his second straight catch. Nice run after the catch. First down out near the 40. They'll mark it at the 41. Holly? Guys, sorry about that, but he had to hurry and drink that Gatorade. He was saying, man, my hammies are tight. He was stretching, trying to get back out because he knew he had to be right back out on the field for defense. Well, Will, Will Muschamp talks about what a phenomenal athlete he is, just lacking in confidence. He's been gaining it week to week. Better than a 40-inch vertical. Will Muschamp said the thing he's most pleased about this year, the increase in the takeaways. And that was another big one by Brown. Robinson, a determined effort, but he could not get free. Blake Gideon there to help knock him out of bounds. Well, the one thing, as you look at Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator one thing that this Texas team can do we said we know they can run but they're young in their secondary and it's really it's fun watching them from week to week because like you said confident you can see them just getting better and better this is going to be a secondary that's going to be able to shut a lot of people down because they've got great speed and great ball skills and three sophomores and a junior Curtis Brown starting regularly in the secondary Robinson on second and 11 couldn't find a man open. Resets the throw, and it is caught. Strong arm there, and it's Tracy Moore, who's an H-back. Gunner Brewer, the offensive coordinator, said he's kind of a roly-poly guy, and sometimes the defenders are surprised how far downfield he can get. This is a really good throw. He's going to his left. He had to square up, redistribute his weight, and put, some root, put a little bit of juice on that thing. And Moore comes back and makes the, that's a big play. Moore comes back and makes a good catch. He's a true freshman, 237 pounds, more of an H-back. But he can sneak down the field. 23-yard gain, first and 10, Oklahoma State moving again. Will it pay off with points? Big hole for Robinson. Slides down very near the first down line. So they're going to mark him just shy of it. Good awareness. Good awareness by Zach Robinson. Sees the coverage. Steps up in the hole. Manages the pocket well. And then sees the green and takes it. What a hamstring problem at the beginning of the year that limited his running as he's gotten healthier. The ground game has returned. Wearing press on on the eye black. 
Here's Tosin. Flags are thrown. If it stands at the first down to the 20. Sean, this is going to be another example of beating yourself. And in this first half, that's what Oklahoma State has done. They've dropped the ball. They've fumbled the ball. And they've been penalized. And it's been killing them. Holding number 76 of the offense. 10-yard penalty. Second down. Russell Okung, the All-American left tackle. Out of Houston, Texas, called for the hole. Watch big number 76 right there. Does a nice job. Now, he was fine. He was fine. He did not have to grab the shirt. He kicked his hips nice and it took everything away from it. The guy was completely blocked. There's Alex Okafor. He threw to the ground. It's Keiston Randall walking off now under his own power. Texas has been playing without Aaron Williams, their starting corner, for several plays now. During the last time out, he went to the locker room under his own power. They've been looking at Aaron Williams' right knee, we're told, from Holly Roll on the sideline. Shockey Brown taking his spot. They get back to Russell Okung. Sean, we met with him yesterday. Very well-spoken guy, very confident guy. And when you watch him on tape, very powerful hands. Bends very well. He has the athleticism. Had a little bit of problem with guys taking an inside move on him. We talked to him about that. He, he knew exactly what he had to do, and that was just keep the discipline of holding that inside post. But this guy is, is a big-time player. Very likely to be a first-round draft pick. In fact, Todd McShay has him rated as the top offensive lineman in next year's NFL draft class. Robinson going deep toward the end zone. And the crowd wants a flag, and they'll get it. There are three flags, in fact, as Andean got tangled up. But Shockey Brown, we mentioned he's in for Aaron Williams, but Brown plays a lot in extra defensive back situations. It's Pass not... interference, number eight of the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Not as though he's inexperienced. But Junior out of Houston. That was, that was the second time that Zach Robinson missed a score. Remember early, he had a guy running down the middle and did not lead him to the middle of the field. This is the same thing. This is underthrown. Had he thrown that thing out, it's six. Did it look to you, though, that Annie stopped when he shouldn't have? Yeah, and he should like, have adjusted to it, yeah. at least. I and, think that if he kept climbed. running, the ball would have been more accurately thrown. He had but position. by stopping, he actually drew the contact. Yeah, and he had position with the defender. All he had to do was get vertical with it, and he makes a play. Zach Robinson, nice decision to pitch it late to post it inside the five and down at the one. And a good block out there by Hubert Antium. Sean, this whole thing is on the quarterback. Watch him draw it right here. He draws the defender to him, and that allows Tosin to get the corner. Once he makes that pitch, it's down the right sideline, but the whole thing is set up on the timing of Zach Robinson. And that is a selfless play. On first and goal, Tostin. Got about a half yard. Alex Okafor in at the bottom of the pile for the University of Texas. Well, we mentioned in recent years in this rivalry, it's been Oklahoma State regularly building up big first half leads, only to watch them all disappear. They're trying to turn the tables on Texas tonight. Aaron Williams is returning to the field now with a noticeable limp. We saw Toasted holding his ribs, kind of bending over. They put Bo Johnson in for him instead. And Johnson in the end zone. Touchdown, Cowboys. They've been close all first half. This is the first time they've been able to finish a drive. Yeah, they went behind that left side of the offensive line on which the All-American Russell Okun resides. 
Dan Bailey, the extra point. Now made a school record, 118 of those in a row. He's never missed one. Oklahoma State finally on the board with more good offense. Here's tonight's Affleck trivia question from Stillwater. We want to know what well-known country singer once held the Oklahoma State school record for a javelin toss. Longest javelin toss in school history. Once upon a time, it's since been broken. You know the answer, so don't blurt it out. Yeah, yeah I'm holding my tongue. <laughs> D.J. Monroe, dangerous return man, freshman from Angleton, Texas. He's already returned two kickoffs for touchdowns this year. Two of the 11 he'd returned prior to tonight, taking the distance. Ken Sharp would like to boom it out of the end zone. He's good at that. About half his kickoffs this year for touchbacks, and there's another. All right, the lightning round of the Athlac trivia question. The duck ready to rally quickly. The answer is Garth Brooks. Who knew? You knew. 200 feet and nine inches of the Big Eight championship was broken in 1984. That's a good toss. Well, he aged well, didn't he? Because let's face it, he's better looking now than he was then. Not that I'm an oil painting. I have, I have no room to speak. Next time he sees you, he's going to throw his guitar at you. <laughs> well, those country singers are huge sports fans. We've seen Kenny Chesney around college game day a couple of times. Colt McCoy had to throw quickly. He was looking for James Kirkendall, and it fell incomplete. Oklahoma State's had an advantage of better than seven minutes in time of possession here in the first half. Texas has capitalized on OSU mistakes. And the Horns lead 17-7 near halftime. 2.16 to go. Two timeouts left for Colt McCoy. There's Shipley right up there. And that's his security blanket. They're going to try to jam him as often as they can tonight. They didn't get hands on him at the line, but he was well defended enough. But McCoy went to Kirk and Dahl. The ball's out. Andre Sexton has it. The crowd wants the call. The officials are saying no. They're marking it down at the 24-yard line. That is a great job by Andre Sexton to getting his hand in there and at least causing a little bit of pause right here for the officials. Let's take a good look at it. There's the hit. He's going to try to fight him. He's got his hand in already. Yeah, that oh, that's out. out. And that they is need, a fumble. They need this time to stop it and review it. They didn't do that earlier when it looked like Texas might have fumbled on a scoring drive. Well, then I would call a timeout if I'm, if I'm Gundy. And here he comes. He's running down the sideline. That is a great play by Andre Sexton, and they're not going to review it. There's yeah, something's he, wrong. He waited as long as he could, Coach Gundy. It shouldn't have to come to this. I agree. This is one of the flaws with the system. The replay man's been involved already several times tonight, sometimes quickly. He needs to be quicker on the draw. If there's any question, get it down to the field and let him know you're going to take a look at it so that the team doesn't have to use the timeout. Timeout, Oklahoma State. They're first to the half. They shouldn't have had thing. to use that. It's one of the things about the system that stinks, and part of that has to be on the replay booth. They need to communicate more quickly when there's a question like that. Couldn't agree more. The one thing you're going to look at right here is where's forward progress. But he's still fighting. He's and fighting, and the, and the whistle is not being blown. And Sexton gets his hand in there immediately. That is a phenomenal job by Sexton right there. Ball's out. He's still fighting. He's not down. That, that looks like a fumble to me. Or a steal, I should say. That's a great play by Andre Sexton. Replay booth informs our truck that they are not reviewing because it had been deemed that forward progress had been stopped. What happens if he bounces off, turns around, and keeps running? Third down and six. This crowd is in an uproar, and Texas converts. John Childs, the former quarterback, with a big catch. McCoy on target. Lucian Antoine the tackle, but the ball's out at the 40, 16-yard gain. First down. Nicely done right there 
by Childs, but a good job again by Colt McCoy. One minute to go in the half. And McCoy avoids the sack, gets two. Bill Young, the defensive coordinator, is really mixing and matching out there. Timeout, Texas. They're second and a half. 30 second timeout. Timeout, Texas. One left for the Horns. Out of the Texas timeout. Colt McCoy in the shotgun, ready to go. 53 seconds left to the half. Second and eight. He throws. It is caught. Jordan Shipley into Oklahoma State territory inside the 42-yard line. Nicely done by Shipley. It looks like they're going to have a little bit of man under and too deep over the top. And Parrish Cox is trailing him underneath. And Shipley, with his great quickness, gets him on his inside hip and it makes that break. And the ball's right on target. Well done by the quarterback and the receiver. Cox, one of the best cornerbacks in the country. They wanted to get him matched up as often as they could with Shipley tonight. McCoy couldn't find a man. Now he runs out of bounds. Picked up two yards and stopped the clock with 41 seconds to go. Chased out by Hugo Chinasa. Mentioned earlier about Bill Young, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, mixing things up. He's been rushing three, dropping eight. He's been rushing three, going man with two people over the top. And this time he's matching up Parrish Cox on Jordan Shipley. This is two of the best out there. They rush five. Texas picked it up beautifully. Shipley is open. And it is just over his head. He got behind Parrish Cox. Shipley winning the most recent battles in that one-on-one. -on -one. And here's why. See the nice quick move on the front end? He gets him, he moves his feet, gets back inside, no hands. Does, if Parrish Cox does not get his hands on him, does not redirect him, and then it's just pure speed. Now, Cox can catch up to him, but it's too late. Shipley had that two-step on him right away. Kevin Durant, another Texas basketball star, now playing down the road in Oklahoma City. Professionally, Kevin. on the sideline for UT. 30 seconds to go. McCoy on the run with plenty of running room. First down, he slides down at the 20. One of the dangers of man coverage down the field or just matching up with guys is that your defender's backs are to the quarterback. And Colt McCoy takes advantage of that. 19-yard run. And he throws it into the ground to stop the clock with 20 seconds left in the half. Texas trying to add to a 10-point lead. This has been a pretty evenly matched football game. The turnovers and the drop balls have been the difference, really. But both these teams are play playing good football. 19. Mike Gundy's team's turned it over twice. It's led to 14 Texas points. Oklahoma State's had the ball. It's better than five-minute advantage in time of possession. They've outgained Texas. 193, 163, but it's Texas leading by 10. And now a late flag thrown as McCoy was hit as he threw incomplete. And it might be a roughing call. Personal foul. Roughing his hand. Hands to the face. 15 yard penalty. First down. Well, they brought a blitz. And they had the coverage. And McCoy does the right thing by throwing the ball away because you've got to feel the pressure coming off of his left side. Right there, Nicholas, and he gets up into his face, and they make that call. Well, he was just trying to put his arms up to block the pass when he followed through his arm, hit McCoy in the helmet. First and ten, just outside the ten. McCoy back in the end zone. Great catch. Touchdown, Malcolm Williams. catch and a good job of getting his foot down watch him track it ball in catch control 
He actually had two feet in. And that is really well done. A nice throw, but a better catch. The amazing thing is he's been victimized by a lot of drop balls. Or an inconsistent catcher, as Mac Brown says. He tends to make the hard catches and drop the easy ones. That was a hard one. He made it for his first touchdown of the season. Sophomore from Garland, Texas. A lot of good young players on both these teams. It's the sign of a good football team when you're up by 17 in a game with in some Matt Ryan has been playing very well and they do have an improved defense. But Drew Blee, Drew Brees right now is playing at an MVP level. And he is just he's is so accurate with the football. And defensively, New Orleans has really improved. Mm -hmm. They've got some defensive ends who can put pressure on the quarterback and they they look like the team to beat in the NFC. They have Darren Sharper picking up a lot of passes. 100 career touchdown passes now for Colt McCoy. Adding to his Texas record. Eight ball time in college football. He's thrown a touchdown pass in 25 straight games. That's a Texas record. He owns 44 school records. Parrish Cox finally able to pick up that kickoff. And he gets smoked out of bounds. Now that's a difficulty with this stadium. Very little room on the sidelines. The stands are very close. Mac Brown says oftentimes the fans will engage you in conversation. And he was going to ask the officials for permission to let his team be close to the field than usual because he doesn't feel it's particularly safe over there all the time. Yeah, he wanted to use them basically as a human shield when guys are, are coming off the sideline, then they're running full speed. So you can kind of break the fall. The stadium has been renovated the last couple of years. Nearly $300 million poured into it. it once an erector set kind of stadium. Now it is state of the art in many ways. Oklahoma State at the edge in total yards, the edge in time of possession. But they run off, trailing Jordan Shipley in the Longhorns 24 to 7 at halftime. Here's Holly. Coach, you open this game. You're this rivalry, and it can be his Cowboys that come back against Texas, as the Horns have done so often to him and the Cowboys. Coming up, stay tuned for a complete half.